instructed by my sister Liz to show more shots of Blondie. She's a Blondie fan. So here's Blondie, and as you can see by the background, we're on the water. And for us, it was a record time. Our stay in the yard was just a matter of days, long enough to service the seacocks and for Lee to polish and paint the prop. We have had good results using this paint, but eventually the finish wears off with use and scrubbing and the prop again becomes vulnerable to barnacles, especially here in Wymus's nutritionally rich pea soup colored water. While we are waiting here in Wymus for a package to arrive, I hope the new paint is doing its job. For me, splashing is an anxious time, and this time I was made even more anxious by the ominous creaks and groans emanating from the travel lift. It was a relief when the end of the ride neared. We delayed in the slip too long, checking seacocks for leaks, reattaching headstays, and running the motor to open the thermostat to add additional coolant after a coolant flush. We elected to spend the night in the slip and wait for the morning high tide. All was well with Labrisa. The stress and anxiousness slipped away with the tide and we spent a peaceful night on the water. In the morning, we slowly crossed the bay, waiting for the furniture office to open so we could receive a slip assignment. We still had a lot of work to do to prep La Brisa for sailing, such as putting up head sails and the dodger, but it would be cooler to do the work on the water than in the yard. Also, I could hardly wait to get to furniture and wash the dirt off the decks. Lee made a trip to the top of the mast to lubricate the shivs. Trudy, happy anniversary. In our book, there is no better way to spend an anniversary than on the boat. And while we are waiting, little projects are being finished. Lee had run another power line to the steering pedestal in the summer, but found the stainless bracket hard to drill, breaking several drill bits. He took the bracket with him to the U.S. and used a drill press to make the holes. Now he has mounted a power outlet and used butyl tape to seal the edges that meet the bracket. The outlet will be for powering my tablet running Navionics and is a trial run. The outlet itself is not specifically for marine outdoor use and we will need to protect it from moisture while we come up with a more permanent solution. Winch manufacturers recommend servicing winches annually and it had been several years since we last serviced these Variant 24 two-speed self-tailing winches. As I am not mechanically inclined, I laid each piece out in the same order I removed them, and it slowly came back to me on how to handle the races and tricky prawls, making sure the long arm of the spring was on the inside edge of the prawl. Now I am proficient, at least with this model of the variant. The only problem we are having is with the electrical circuit for the forward overhead cabin lights. Somewhere in the wiring there is a connection that has corroded, leading to a drop in voltage, 
which in turn has caused the lights in the head and V-birth to dim and fail. The factory yellow and black wiring leading to the failed lights was spliced somewhere in the past, somewhere along the circuit. As the wiring leaving the circuit breaker panel is white and black, and the aftermarket installed lights with white and black wiring are working. Lee made several cuts into the overhead panels, but was unable to locate the problem splice. For now, the lights are working because Lee has made a new splice of the yellow and black wiring into the white and black. It is all very confusing and puzzling. Eventually, we will need to remove the ceiling panels and rewire the entire circuit. While we wait for the package, Blondie and I are renewing summer acquaintances on our walks and making new friends. So what is this package we are waiting for? A Starlink. Join us next time when hopefully we have the Starlink up and working and are on our way across to Baja. So until next time, 